Yo, I'm down at Walmart, right? While I was in there, I said, let me pick up some fish fry. I'm going to fry some fish tonight. So as I go down the aisle where the fish fry is at, I pick up on a conversation. And, you know, I look, I look to my right, and this old school cat, he all dressed in yellow, baby powder down. You know how the old school do it. I mean, baby powder from the bottom of his chin to the bottom of his feet. And all I heard him say was, I'm tired of you. I pay electric, I pay water, I pay gas, and you don't show me no time. I'm getting tired of this, Marlene. Her name was Marlene, apparently. And then, you know, as he was going back and forth with the cell phone from ear to ear, arguing, he was hot. I noticed he had on eight mood rings, four on each hand. And boy, the mood rings was blinging like a Christmas tree, like, you know what I mean? Just blinging and popping. His emotions was all over the place. So the young girl, the young girl must have hung up on him, right? He was kind of hot, man. So he, he, he kind of walked off. He wasn't watching what he was doing. He kind of bumped into me. He said, excuse me, young blood. I said, you cool, man. You know, no, no problem, old school. I said, you all right? Them rings was popping, too. I mean, it was going different colors all over the place. He said, yeah, man, I'm all right. My young girl got me feeling some kind of way. <laughs> I said, yeah, I can tell. By the look at those rings, you are feeling some kind of way. He laughed, gave me a pound, and, you know, gave me a chest bump. Powder went everywhere. So once the powder cleared, I took his phone and made him subscribe to Tank Commander Zulu and the Real Man Movement. Salute family, Tank Commander Zulu back at you once again in the Real Man Movement. Today, we're going to be dealing with the assault or attack that's on men and masculinity. And what role do certain women play in the attack against men and masculinity? Is it really true that hell has no fury? like a woman scorn? Let's talk about it here today with Tank Commander Zulu and the Real Man Movement. Fire and hold, baby. Yo, we dealing with pure, raw strength. No steroids, no. We don't do that. We live off genetics and hard work. Pure power, baby. Ah. Easy way. Too easy. Ah, it's the real man movement, baby. That's what we do. Salute, family. Tank Commander Zulu back at you once again in the real man movement. Before we get into the discussion tonight, I want to invite everybody to become a subscriber to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And if you are subscribed, salute. Thank you for joining the Tank and the Real Man Movement. I also need you to give us a thumbs up and also leave a comment. All of this helps with the availability of the videos and that they can be viewed by more people who are in need of this positive male enforcement. Now back to the topic of discussion. The attack on men and masculinity and the part women play in this attack on the males and male masculinity. What role do certain women play? All women do not support male masculinity. Let's keep it real right now, off the gate. A lot of women do not support male masculinity. And that's a problem, y'all. But the bigger question is, why would any woman not support male masculinity? You see, we got to dig a little bit deeper into the understanding of things. We tend to always kind of look at the, the abusive side of men and them being abusive to women. But we never really look at the side where women 
are abusive to men. Now let's talk about this. You know, because like the old saying goes, there's always two sides to every story. And those two sides simply are, in this particular instance, that every woman that claims to be domestically abused is not abused without starting or causing the situation to happen. Now listen, I'm an advocate against any man beating on a woman. Let me make this clear before we go any further into this video. I cannot stand a man that beats a woman where he's just overwhelmingly uh, exerting his masculinity over a woman for no reason at all, other, other than to say that he can do it. Other than to say that he feels like punching her in the face because she didn't do something he wanted her to do or something crazy. Something that is along the lines of being abusive and violent towards a woman. I stand against that 100%. And in the past, I have intervened when I saw a man beating on a woman. For no cause, really. I put myself in the line of fire because of it. So I'm not an advocate for domestic violence or violence against women in any form or fashion. But now we're talking about this attack on men and male masculinity and the role some women play. I'm dealing with the some women that are out there today who play a role in this attack against masculinity. You know, there's some women that can be abusive towards men. And it's hard for society to really understand that. They feel that under no circumstances should you touch a woman. No circumstances. Now, listen, for the most part, I believe that. But in reality, listen, if some women are so disrespectful today, they are so broken and so torn and so scorned by what they've learned in their household, the households they came from, and what they perceive a woman to be and a man to be. You see, that understanding between what a woman should be and a man should be is distorted in a lot of women. In other words, a lot of women that come from a matriarchal society, a home that was raised with just women, and the women had to be tough, they had to be in the forefront, they had to be on the front line, so to speak, of life. They don't have no respect for no men. You see women today talk about, oh, oh I'll fight men, I'll fight a man. You're not going to fight no real man. And when? Without being sever severely beaten or hurt. But the, the time that you say, the, from the time you said, I'll fight a man, that's a part of the attack that's on the male masculinity right there. That's just one part. We got several parts to discuss. But challenging a man physically when there's no need to. Putting your hands on a man continuously when there's no need to. You see, sometimes a man could be trying to get out the way. He could be trying to receive when this woman is just so, being so overwhelming in, uh, in her attack towards him that his reaction sometimes might, he might hit her. And now that he didn't hit her, now he's, oh, everybody's looking at him. Oh, he's a man. You shouldn't have put your hands on that woman. Okay, he shouldn't have did it. Why did she put her hands on him? Real man movement. Young bull going for something. Going for a personal best. We've been in here for over an hour right now. Pushing. Come on, son. Watch the repetition. Go. Come on. Hardcore. Come on. No quit. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Everything tight. Ten more. Come on, son. Come on. Push. 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 Come on. Go with you. Go. Go. Down the battlefield. Go. 
There you go. Go. Woo. There you go. I'm talking about real man moving, baby. That's how you work. If we are living in this kind of society today, well, where women say chivalry is dead. Some of these women. I'm not talking about every woman. I'm not talking about a real woman. A real woman, listen, won't go there. She understands and respects her man. She's not out to embarrass him or disrespect him. She's not out to do that. And he's not out to do that to her. But when you get an overbearing woman, and I got to call it like it is, and I know this may make a lot of women upset, but the truth of it is you need to be called out on this. I'm calling you overbearing women out on this today. You are part of the attack that is on male masculinity. You just don't know how to respect no man. And it's sad that some men allow this to happen. Some men have allowed it to happen because they are just stuck in a, in a place where, well, no matter what she does to me, I'm, I'm not supposed to put my hands on her. And let's get this understanding straight because I'm going to have some people who just don't have a good understanding about things thinking that I'm advocating for a man to hit a woman, and I'm not. I'm bringing to the forefront the truth that many women, in particular in today's society, have not been called out on and how they are being disrespectful, how they are embarrassing the man, and how they are physically exerting punishment upon him, knowing that all she has to do is pick up the phone and say, he hit me. Or in the, in the, in the event that something happens and, and he fires back on her in public, he may have taken all he can, tried to get away, he couldn't get away, she's punching him, trying to punch him like a man, and he fires back on her and knocks her, knocks her out, knocks her down. You may have men that want that see just that part of it, and they get involved. Now you got another conflict between two men. One man is under the impression that this man is a domestic violence abuser. He's, he, he's committing a domestic violence act when in all actuality, he is self-defending him. He's, he, he's producing a self-defense act. He's just simply trying to defend himself. When he's tried to get out of the way, when he's tried to, to, to hold her hands, and she, she's acting so belligerent to the point that she wants to, uh, she wants to challenge that man like she's a man. You see, that dynamic is part of this attack that is on male masculinity. There's no way any woman should be approaching a man physically like a man should approach another man. She shouldn't approach a man like she's a man. And every time she does that, she, did, she takes something away from the masculinity. Let me, let me explain myself here. The masculinity that a man should have in the area of defending himself. You don't get a right to disrespect anyone simply because you are emotionally messed up and what I mean by emotionally messed up listen I'm starting with women who do challenge men as though they are men and when the man retaliates now it's time to call the police or someone should have stopped it someone should be involved this man is is an animal why would he hit a woman and she caused it all you see we don't talk about this enough and the fact that we don't talk about it is another form of, a, of an attack on male masculinity. And the women who are being involved in it, they, they, they understand some women, and I'm not going to say, look, the real women don't do this. And I applaud and salute real women. They don't put themselves in that type of situation or position at all to challenge a man physically. No. But we live in a society today, society today, where women are told they can be and do whatever men do. And that's just simply not true. Not true. We're made different for a reason. A real man movement, baby. You got to make up your mind that you will not give up. 
Hey, you go work, son, work. Come on. Don't worry about how tired you are. You're not a man until you can work through fatigue. Come on, push. One more, one more. One more. Ah, here you go, good, good. Real man moving, baby. Hood, hood blinded. But besides going into all that, you know, about the place of a man and the place of a woman, we're talking about this attack on masculinity and how some women participate in this attack on masculinity. You see, some women come from homes where there was nothing but other women who did nothing but continually disrespect men. And they may have done it because they were broken and they, they go into another relationship defensive. They disrespect the man and sometimes these weak men and, 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 and we got to blame the men, the men for this because you were weak. It was a lot of weak men who allowed this disrespect, this embarrassment and all of this thing, these things that these overbearing women, how they, with the, how they approach and handle a man, they allowed it to happen. Weak men did that. That's a part of the attack on masculinity as well. But these women come from these, these, these matriarchal uh, households. And I'm not talking matriarch, matriarchal in a positive way, but in a negative way where women run everything. Where it's okay to talk to a man like, like any kind of way like you want to. The era where, oh, you don't even need a man no more. Come on. You know what that era produced. You don't need a man. Now you need a woman. A woman needing a woman. You don't need a man. You went from that era to I'll fight a man. Now you're going to actually, with hundreds and thousands of dollars weave in your hair, dresses and skirts on, and go get in front of a man and talk about fighting a real man. There's no way in the world you listen. And it's sad. Because you've been so messed up in the head for so many years, you are partially crazy. To think that if this man turn on you, you can beat him. You can't. And if you do, it's that, you, that wasn't a real man anyway. But when you disrespect a, a man and he's no longer able to rightly and comfortably defend himself, that's all. When he can't get away, when he tries to avoid, and because this woman's head is so messed up, she feels that, listen, it's necessary for her to physically attack him. Part of the problem. Part of the attack. Mothers raising their, their daughters, telling their daughters, hey, if, 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 if a man does this and that, you better fight him. Do this to him. Do that to him. Part of the problem. And listen, I'm not talking about in the way of defending yourself, but I'm talking about in the way of taking charge of a relationship like a man should, the woman trying to do that. She's trying to be in that role. Disrespectful. Part of the problem. Part of the attack. You know, women, when they say things sometimes, just like in the, on the male side, you know, society accepts the fact that, listen, domestic violence isn't always physical. It can be verbal. So you're saying that a man can verbally abuse a woman. But uh, listen, a man cannot abuse a woman verbally like a, like a woman can abuse a man. And, and we know this. The tongue of a woman is sharper than any sword you can imagine. She can tear a man down. She can make him feel like nothing. She can embarrass him. She can degrade him. And she does these things publicly. Women who do that, part of that problem. You are part of the attack and the assault on, men, on male masculinity. Yes, you are. I don't care how good a woman looks, how fine she may think she, she, she is. Some, some weak men, will they will play the passive role just to be with that woman. And listen, it's, it's sad because even, even in the Bible, right? In Proverbs 21 and in verse 9, I'm going to paraphrase it though for you. The Bible says, it is better to live on the corner of a rooftop than to live with a contentious woman. 
And in some translations, it says uh, a, a brawling woman, a nagging woman, a woman who is being troublesome. He said, the Bible says it's better to live on the corner of a rooftop than to live with that kind of woman. A contentious woman. One who is disrespectful. One who will challenge you as though she's a man. One who has no regard for what they do to you. And if you retaliate soon as you do, you're looked at as being a criminal, as being a monster. That's messed up a lot of our men. A lot of men have been to jail for domestic violence that should not be there. And don't get me wrong, the majority of men that are there for domestic violence, they probably should be there. But the men that are not there is a great percentage. It's because they made poor decisions to live with this contentious woman. The Bible's saying it right there in Proverbs 21 and 9, that it's better for you to live alone than to live with a woman like that. It says that it's better for you to live on the corner of a rooftop. Imagine getting on your roof and getting get in a corner by yourself. To live in that little space alone than to live with a contentious woman, a brawling woman, a nagging woman. That's scripture. So for all you women that say hallelujah, thank you Jesus, you better start saying hallelujah, thank you Jesus to that because that is scripture. Proverbs 21 and 9. For those women who want to jump out front like they're men. And I personally, I've never seen a household that was happy where the woman was overbearing. Never seen it. You may have thought it was happy. That man is going through teetotal hell. And because he's a weak man, he just sits there for years and years and years of taking her verbal uh, abuse, her embarrassment, her, 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 her degrading him. And sometimes even, even physically putting her hands on, there, on him because she's going through her little emotional swings. It's unacceptable. Th those components that these particular women possess are a part of the attack on men and masculinity. You see, it goes right back to the old saying, hell has no fury like a woman scorned. And by the way, that's not a biblical saying, no. It doesn't come from the Bible. That's something that an a old British playwright wrote back in the 1600s in a play that he was writing. He, he, he mentions somewhere in the play that, you know, and, and I'm paraphrasing what he said, but he, to the, this is where the, the phrase, hell has no fury like a woman scorned, comes from. It comes from this British playwright. But now when the Bible says the same thing in a different way in the book of Proverbs, which is written really by King Solomon, a man of wisdom, one of the most wisest men in the Bible, says that it is better to live on the corner of a rooftop than to live with a contentious woman. That's truth. Contentious women are part of the attack and the assault on males and masculinity. These women will embrace men who are kind of on the other end of things, who think that they're women. They'll embrace them, make them their best friends. But a real man, they'll disrespect him, get in his face, embarrass him, and even physically challenge him until that man can't take any more and he lashes back out. You see, we got to tell the truth about both sides of the story. An abusive man is no good. An abusive woman is no good. She should be held at the same standard as a man and not just overlooked. So sometimes we have to really analyze a situation. When we see a situation, do we know everything? 
or we hear about a situation, do we know everything about it? Some cases are cut and dry. Well, this man is just abusive. And, th th and then others are a little bit in the, in the gray every area. But when it comes to a woman producing the violence towards a man, you see, it messes with the male masculinity. Because now the world is telling him, okay, you need to submit in every area, no matter what. You need to submit no matter what. I don't care if she busts you in the head with a, with a baseball bat, you need to submit. That's crazy. No, no. Nobody has the right to do that to my son, your son, your, your nephew, your cousin. Look at it that way. That if you're some male, young male that you love gets involved with one of these crazy, over-the-top matriarchal women who think that they're men and think they physically will fight a man. Imagine it's your son, your child, your nephew, your cousin, some young male you love, and they're put in that position. Would you expect them to defend themselves? Yes. Because there's been many cases where men have went to jail, went to, went to trial, and guess who was there on their side? Their mother. Explaining best as she can to the court, to the jury, to the judge, that her son was in an abusive relationship with the woman. That the woman was always the aggressor. For some reason, he continued to mess with her. And because he did, now he's sitting in court, now he's sitting in court and going to jail because he simply couldn't take no more and, and got her off of, off of him. And now she calls the police or so the police get involved one way or another and automatically the male gets grabbed for domestic violence. That's the attack. The attack on male masculinity nobody wants to talk about. So the, selling, the saying that hell, hell has no fury like a woman scorned, See, these are scorned women I'm talking about. A woman that's scorned, she honestly believes she can do whatever she wants to. Long as she got the weave in her hair, she, long as she got pretty eyes, long as she got pretty skin, a pretty smile, long as she got a beautiful body, she can do whatever she thinks she can do whatever she wants to. And even those who don't have it, those physical attributes, They've been so mentally messed up that they automatically, they want to be the ones to come in and, 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 and face a man. Soon as they hear something, oh, no, where, where you at, girl? They done jumped in the car, and they're going to the man, and she going to get her, her friend Big Bertha or whoever it is to jump in this man's face. And when Big Bertha get knocked out, now we want to call the police and call that man, uh, you know, a a contributor to domestic violence when he was only defending himself? That's part of the attack. All of it is to feminize real men. But here at the Real Man Movement, we do not go for that. We love our women. We are the protectors of our women. So no woman should challenge you as a man. You should never put yourself in a position to disrespect a woman as a real man. We love, we cherish, we honor our real women. Salute to all those real women out there. We can't make it without you. We love you. But for that scorned woman who's playing those games, challenging men, disrespecting men, using the system to her advantage, because she's so emotionally torn and she's scorned that she feels she can play with the lives of men at random. That's what we're talking about today. That's the ones who are a part of the attack 
on men and masculinity. The scorned woman. Don't be a scorned woman if you're watching tonight. Don't be scorned. And, and, and for the men out there, if you're dealing with a woman who is scorned, just like the Bible says in Proverbs 21 and 9, it is better for you to live in a corner on a rooftop than to live with a contentious woman. It's better for you to be by yourself, brother than to live with a woman who would do these things to you and challenge your masculinity as though she was a man. That's what we're dealing with today here at the Real Man Movement. We believe in the strengthening of the male mind, body, and spirit. And we fear no man but God, baby. No man but God. Tank Commander Zulu signing out.